Hello and welcome to episode 3 of season 3 of the Failsafe Fitness Podcast. Here with me, Michael Joshua, owner and lead programmer at Failsafe Fitness Limited. Welcome to the show everybody. I hope you've been enjoying the show over the last few weeks. I did take a little break through October, but we're back here. November, fireworks have been going off all over the place. We'll be hearing them right until the new year like we normally do here in the uk for the american listeners fireworks night is very strange we actually celebrate terrorism so some guy tried to blow the house of parliament up so what do we do fifth of november we have bonfires and set fireworks off unlike you guys you guys just set fireworks off whenever you feel like it we do it to celebrate terrorism which is great But yeah, how's everybody doing? I hope everybody listening is having a good day. If not, let's get into the show and hopefully cheer you up. As always, starting the show with what I've been up to over the last week or so. And it's been coaching, um, surprisingly. Weather hasn't been too bad. I've had several lessons this week in terms of coaching at Himley or coaching at the home base. I've been dealing with a couple of triathletes that have been coming to me since mid-June. They've both had various issues at at different parts of their their runs. So the husband of the group was struggling when he came out of the water, uh, when he was sat on the bike. And we found that we just needed to work on his lower back, so a bit of deadlift and a, a stronger core has helped that and his other half was very different she was struggling when she came off the bike into the run and what we actually discovered through a bit a little bit of trial and error and some some wonderful technology wizardry was the fact that when she was on the bike she was actually really only pushing with the right leg so the right glute and right leg were firing all the time and the left leg was really a passenger unless it was on a, a steep incline or decline Um, so the left leg was a bit of a passenger so when she got off the bike and go to start the run her uh, her left hip was hurting so we've worked on that over the last couple of months they've flown out to America to go and do a triathlon Um, and good luck to them I hope hope you do really well we fixed your problems and it's wonderful to see clients happy with the progress that they've made and the things that they've learned the knowledge that they can take forward in whatever sport or career that they are doing so if you are interested in coming to me for any of your golf performance or exercise performance then it is 20 pounds an hour for personal training golf performance is half price at 10 pounds per hour uh currently it's only on a simulator so i have a giant net go and see the social media post on instagram and the post via the himley hall golf center facebook and website you can see the setup we've got so i'm using launch monitor data uh, with real world balls into a net and we can tell from that launch monitor how good or how bad you're hitting it and let's be honest we all know how good or how bad you hit it when you play golf so half price 10 pounds an hour if you do want to come and have just a session on any golf course the, i have the ability to play fifty thousand plus golf courses so if you want to ring up and you want to book an hour on the simulator whether that be one of you or four of you it's 10 pounds an hour at himley hall golf center give me a ring contact me we can download the golf course and get you playing on that throughout the winter while the actual golf course is shut of course it is november and black friday deals are available so obviously we've slashed the price on those golf performance lessons personal training at 20 pounds an hour the three for two deal is back so if you do want three personal training sessions or sports performance sessions then three for two 40 pounds for three hours of my expertise and nutrition 15 pounds an hour or three for two three hours for 30 pounds that's 10 pound a session we can take a look at your nutrition 
and try and put you on the straight and narrow or at least guide you in a direction that you might want to go. Well, that's been pretty much it this week. So I've done a little bit outside in terms of gardening. Been a, a, a basic bitch greenkeeper at the minute with no tools. You know, we've just been swishing the greens and ticking them over. We can't really do a lot with them until we get some drier weather. And obviously, personal training clients have been doing really well. The triathletes are doing really well. They've gone off to go and do their thing. And then golf performance coaching. I think everybody this year has benefited. I've got one client has jumped from the mid-70s down to the low 50s. Uh, in terms of scores for nine holes and they're a really high handicapper they were up at like 47 48 they're now down to sort of mid to low 30s and i've got some people who are just improving their golf ready for a handicap next year so let's get into it then shall we let's talk about exercises now, if you've seen over the last few weeks, we'll be doing some specifics. And this is another specific exercise. So, people who play, you know, racket sports, you know, tennis, badminton, squash, golfers, uh, cricketers, you know, we do a lot with our arms. And to help, you know, grip strength is, is a great asset. And this exercise is the reverse dumbbell wrist curl. So all you're going to do is take a dumbbell. It can be quite light to quite heavy, depending on how strong or how fit you are. Lay your forearm down on a flat surface like a bench and hang the wrist over the, over the end with the dumbbell in hand. And all you're going to do is either to failure and take a minute rest and do it again to failure three times or you're going to do specific three by ten reps knowing that that third set of ten you might not get to ten you're only going to get to seven or eight that'll be about perfect and all you're going to do is rotate that wrist from being hanging down to as high as you can get it and that's just going to help build the extensors in that forearm it's going to help strengthen your grip. So when you're deadlifting or doing pull-ups, playing golf or tennis or anything like that, it's going to improve your grip and help prevent injuries. Because a lot of injuries, if you're trying to hold on too tight to something or you try not, they haven't got a tight enough grip on the bar or whatever, and it slips out of your hands. So having doing this exercise is going to help build some forearm muscle. It's going to help build some grip strength and hopefully going to help prevent some injuries. So go give that a try. Talking of exercise, my testing videos, I've done one, he's gone up live. It's a full or raw unedited, unedited video on Facebook, uh, sorry for not Facebook, on YouTube. The second video will be going up Monday, uh, probably around about the same time as this current podcast goes out as well so I've done a little bit of testing um 12 minute row is coming i didn't obviously not going to film you mean on the row for 12 minutes it's going to be boring but the next few tests are going to be um bench press front squat back squat lat pull down those are going to be the the next the next batch of tests uh, and then the next video after that is going to be me going into doing the exercise program that I'm going to be doing right up until the start of next season. So one to three times a week. Um, I'm hopefully going to do a minimum of two sessions between now and then. That's the plan, depending on how busy I am. Uh, but I'm trying to make time, get up early or finish late or finish early so I can get these things done. I need to do it. If you look at me on that video, I look like crap. Uh, I'm, I've lost about 25, 30 kilo on my deadlift. I've lost 10 or 15 kilo in my push overhead press. Um, yeah, I'm weak. 
I'm, I'm quite weak, um, which is a, a surprise for me. Well, it's not really a surprise. I'm still pretty strong for my age and the way I look, but I need to be stronger. I need to be leaner. I need to be meaner. And 2024 is the one that's going to be with it. The videos I'm sharing are completely unedited. Um, you may hear some swear words. You may hear some farts. You may hear some, some things you might not want to hear, but that's not my problem. If you want to watch my journey, because my journey is basically going to be the exact same journey as a client who's coming to me who's either sedentary or who hasn't been to the gym for a while. It's the exact same journey. It's the exact same thing. It'll be the same things I'm doing with myself. I'm treating myself as a client. Uh, as well as, you know, you can see how I treat my clients is the way I treat myself. So if you do want to see that video is up on YouTube right now. Let's get into eating then, shall we? So, nutrition. And this is something that I picked up from elsewhere, but it's a little recipe. So, everybody in the exercise world believe peanut butter is a great energy giver. So, what I'm going to get you to do, it's a simple recipe. Write it down, get your pens and papers ready. Um, I'll probably put it in a blog post at some point or on Instagram. I'll put it up on Instagram. So if you want to follow me on Insta, go and take a look at the recipe. So it's a, for simple bars, energy bars. It's something I've done before, but it's very simple. So you're going to get one whole jar of clear honey from Aldi. You're going to get two smooth peanut butters again from Aldi. And a bag of their cheap porridge oats from Aldi. Then you're going to grab yourself a couple of their very cheap white, dark or milk chocolate bars. And all you're going to do is you're going to take the two jars of peanut butter and the one jar of honey. Pour them into a saucepan and heat, mix them up. Heat them up until it's all mixed together so it's kind of a, a big brown gooey mess while that's being stirred and being heated through I want you to measure four cups of porridge oats get four cups of porridge oats put them and then put them into a bowl put them to one side Depending on how big your pan is, you can, once your peanut butter and honey are mixed together, you can add those porridge oats into that pan. If it's not big enough, make sure your bowl is big enough, but either or, doesn't really matter. Either or, add those together, mix them together. Once the peanut butter and the honey is warm and all mixed together, add your four cups of oats into that mixture, stir them all in. Then take a dish or a baking tray lined with paper, or grease proof paper, and spread that mixture out like it's a big slab. Try and make it as even as you can, and then chuck it in the fridge. So take your mixture, spread it out onto a baking sheet, Nice and flat, as flat as you can, like as if it was going to be a giant flapjack. Smooth it out. It, that will get a little messy, trust me. But smooth it out, bung it in the fridge. While that's in the fridge, get some water and your bowl, wash it out. Break your chocolate into pieces and or either you can, well, put, it in, put the chocolate into a bowl. And you can probably microwave every... 10 to 20 seconds just keep microwaving that chocolate until it's make it's it's melted once the chocolate is fully melted pour that over your spread out mixture bung it back in the fridge leave it for an hour or two at least once that is settled then you can cut that into bars and you've got yourself a peanut butter oat bar 
with whatever white dark or milk chocolate on that snacks are going to last you a week maybe two so you can either take them to the gym you can take them to work and they're great little snacks i'll put everything up on instagram and for i'm going to say less than like five or six quid you're going to make yourself 20 30 of these little bars rather than buying a kit kat or Snickers or Mars at a pound each you're gonna get 20 or in anywhere between 15 and 25 of these bars depending on how you cut them up that are gonna last you a week maybe a fortnight and they're much healthier you know what's in it and they're gonna give you loads of energy so that's my nutrition tip for the week And if you go to the blog, link again is in the description. Also, Facebook, Instagram, and of course, the website, Felsafe Fitness at Weebly.com. You can go and take a look at our blog. And our blog this week is going to be about sweat and salt. So you may hear when you're training people talk about essential salts and essential vitamins and essential this and essential that. And that is going to be um, all based on sodium. So if you've ever thought about, you know, how much salt or how much sodium do I need to take and how it affects your sweat whilst you exercise or even if you go to work, especially in the hot summer, go take a read. There's some interesting stuff, and that will get you all clued up on what you need to be intaking or ingesting to either help or what can actually hinder your essential vitamins and your salts and sodiums. And now we get to the uh, the fun bit. Obviously, every couple of years, um, RNA, USGA, the, the guys that run golf, like to mess with us a little bit. And it's been three years since the World Handicap System came into place. And there are going to be some key changes. It's the first revision to the handicap system since it was released three years ago, or four years ago, sorry. Uh, and the first one is going to be a lower minimum length for golf courses to obtain course ratings. So if you, like me in the winter, I like to go and play this little par three course just down the road from where our golf course is. And because they've been under 3,000 yards for 18 holes and under 1500 yards for nine holes they can't get a course rating well starting in 2024 those types of courses those little par threes will be able to get a slope rating and the yardage requirements have been cut in half so 18 holes needs to measure 1500 yards and nine holes needs to measure 750 yards. So if you've got a par three golf course that previously measured less than 3,000 yards, well, measured less than 1,500 yards, it meant that you couldn't get a slope rating and you couldn't be on the handicap system. So for people who play par threes and shorter length golf courses, those scores can now count towards your handicap which if you're like us you move to a shorter par 3 course just to keep your eye in over the winter and then use the driving range for your longer stuff um, you can now do that from 2024 the second biggest change um, is the treatment of nine hole scores as it currently stands nine hole scores are combined in the order that they are posted for instance I play on a Monday morning and I shoot 
42. And then I don't play again until the, the Wednesday after. So not the following Wednesday, we get the Wednesday after that. And I shoot a 52. So those two scores are added together, giving me a 18-hole score of 94. I, I thought I said 54 then, but I didn't. So I shoot 94, for instance, over that 18 holes. That goes on to my handicap rating as a 94. This will no longer be the case. So obviously, you know, you can think about it. I shoot 42 on the Monday. I shoot 52 on the, on the week on Wednesday. And then the Friday, I go and shoot a 38. And then Saturday, I go and shoot a 48. But instead of picking those two, the two best ones and combining that, it's already combined the scores together for a 94 and then an 86. So what we are going to do, or what the World Handicap System are going to do, is a player that posts a nine-hole score, it will be combined with their expected score differential over nine holes to create an 18-hole score differential for immediate use. Now, score differential, you may have seen this, or may or may not have seen this, um, when you're putting scores into the, ha into the app. And the score differential is the adjusted gross score minus the course rating. So 113 divided by the slope rating, which means, say, you shoot an 89, which is a par, uh, on a par 71 golf course. So course rating is a 71.5. Slope rating is 138. Which means calculation is 89. You're, you're expected to shoot 89. Which equals 14.3 shots. Compared to the slope rating of the golf course. You get 14.3 shots. So. For instance. I am. Playing this golf course. The par 71 which ours is over 18 holes off the white. I get 14.3. So if we're playing in a competition, I mean, the easiest way to explain it, I'm, I'm getting, I've probably lost a few people there. So it's an adjusted gross score based on your handicap for 18 holes. So, for instance, we play 95% of our handicap and you lose a shot when you play in a competition. So, for me personally, par 71 off the whites, I'm a handicap of an 11. Uh, and I actually play off, I think it's 9. I get 9 shots off the whites. So, I put in a score on the whites for the front 9, which is the easy 9. So, I get 4 shots. So what the handicap system is going to do is it's going to make up the shots for the back nine. But if I shoot six over par for the front nine, so I shoot a 42 when my actual score should be a 40, what they will do is then calculate the back nine and add it to that and make the back nine up. Which I don't think is fair, but it gives me an adjusted 18-hole score. And this is something I tried to explain to a few of our committee members over the last couple of years. Is that putting in, making up, we used to put 18-hole scores in for 9-hole competition. I said, well, it doesn't make any difference. Because the nine hole score is the only one that's making the difference. And this is exactly what they're doing here. The nine holes, whether it be front or back nine that you play, 
will be your actual score. And if I shoot six over par, for instance, on the front nine, and the back nine, according to my adjusted handicap, I should shoot four over. I'm one over par for the front nine, and it will keep me a one over par for the entire 18 holes. Which means only the front nine is adjusting my actual handicap. Which makes sense. It makes sense in the fact that I haven't had to play 18 holes to, to get my handicap adjusted. But the thing that still doesn't make any sense to me about this particular change is that people were annoyed that golf's their scores weren't changing often enough because of the nine holes. But why don't they just use adjusted score for nine holes instead of 18? Now it's going to make up nine holes the way we were doing it and the scores didn't really seem to change anyway. So, you know, that that's, you know, nine hole scoring and nine hole competitions it's not really going to make a difference, I don't think. I think golf is is complicated enough, and that system is just going to create more questions than it answers. Because we were doing 18 holes, and it wasn't really changing people's handicaps, so we decided just to do 9 holes, and it was combining those two 9-hole scores into 18 holes, and then giving people a handicap. And because we play... Um, nine hole competitions four times four times a month one every week people were putting in two 18 hole scores every month and if you go for a golf course that only plays that's only open five or six months of the year that means that we're only putting in what 20 maybe 24 actual handicap scores per year when people's golf, probably towards the middle and towards the end, got a lot better and a little bit worse. Whereas now with these made up and adjusted gross scores, uh, for the 18 holes, even if you play 9 hole competitions, it's going to do exactly the same, but it might see your handicap go up and down better, more accurately to what you're playing. So if you shoot... 50s at the start of the year, and then you're, you're shooting low 40s towards the middle of the year, your handicap will drop quite rapidly. And then if it goes back up to the shooting 50s towards the end of the year, it might not climb as much because we know your potential is better. I think it's what they're trying to do. Uh, a lot of complaints of mid to high-ish handicappers winning a lot of competitions over the, because their handicaps weren't dropping quickly enough is probably why they've done it. And the third and final thing with the WHS system um, is an updated approach for holes not played. So when a hole isn't played due to, you know, it got dark, competition was cancelled after, uh, after 12 holes, the recorded score is a net par at the minute when the 2024 revision goes into effect when 10 to 17 holes have been played an 18 hole score differential will be determined by adding the player's score differential from the holes played to an expected score so basically again your expected score if you're your front nine you're like me uh from the white to the himley i play off four and the back nine i'm expected to play off five if I've played, if we've played 15 holes and it's too dark or too wet and the competition's been abandoned, whatever, on my round, but I'm f I'm five over with three holes to play, what it's going to do is I've shot my handicap on the front nine, I'm two over for the back nine, and then 16, 17, and 18, it's just going to put me as bogey, bogey, bogey. A uh, bogey bogey. So it's going to put my adjusted score as level par.
and depending on how you're playing, if if obviously if I've gone, if I'm already five over with three holes to play, it's going to put me through as level par as well because I've already hit my projected handicap score for that back nine. Since a player's expected score is not specific to a course, or reliant upon the course's stroke index allocated as a net par is today, this will lead to a bit more of a consistent scoring if holes aren't played due to any problems. Which I think a few a few people towards the end of the summer, and especially now the winter is here and it's dark at three at half past three. Uh, people aren't getting rounds in, they're not finishing scores, which means they're not able to present full scores. So this is going to stop that and keep scores more consistent between competitions and for clubs that are open throughout the winter. And that's pretty much it for this week. Um, I hope I haven't confused too many people uh, on the handicap system. Um, it's very confusing myself. As a handicap secretary, it's taken me a little while to work it out. But it's basically going to the thing that we were doing last year. It's going to do itself on it by itself this year. Um, just to keep people's handicaps changing a little bit more frequently. Uh, which, which can be a good thing. Can be a bad thing, but can also be a good thing. If you're playing at par 3 golf courses now that are over 750 yards, you're going to be able to put those scores in over the winter, especially if you're in the UK. You're going to put them, be able to put those scores in over the winter and they're going to count towards your handicap. And then, you know, if you're playing in competitions that are abandoned because the course is, you know, they it's over Saturday and Sunday comp uh, and Sunday is abandoned, everybody's going to get treated the same way. You know, your your projected scores, etc. are all going to be filled out uh, and there's going to be less chance of, of cheating, shall we say. Thanks again for listening. Like I say, if you do want any personal training, £20 an hour, three for two, nutrition advice, £15 an hour, three for two, and your golf coaching at Himley Hall or at the Failsafe Fitness Centre are just £10 an hour throughout November. Enjoy your Black Friday deals, enjoy your golf, enjoy your exercise, and enjoy your recipe for your energy bars. Have a great week. My name's been Michael. Bye-bye.